<laughs> is Mary, no, no, sorry. We're just recording it on... Um, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Recording it on the computer. God, no, we'll post to YouTube later. Right. Peter, Peter, what are you doing? Following that man. You gave up your life of fishing. Will it really last? Cause you think about the way things might have been if you'd remained at sea. You'd still be a fisherman, Peter. You're such a fool. Peter, Peter, what are you doing? Slipping in those waves. You thought you'd walk across the water, well now, now you're sinking fast. And you think about the way things could have been if you'd remained at sea. You'd still be a fisherman, Peter, you're such a fool. Peter, Peter, what are you doing? Crying by the fire. You told them you did not know him. Now he's gone and died. And you think about the way things might have been if you'd remained at sea. You'd still be a fisherman, Peter. You're such a fool, such a fool. Peter, Peter, what are you doing? Hanging upside down. Peter, Peter, you know, you know you're dying. Dying for your Lord And you think about the way it could have been If you'd remained at sea You'd still be a fisherman Peter You're such a fool And oh I like to be such a for worship, hear these words from Psalm 31. In you, O God, we seek refuge. Do not let us ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver us. Now here are some announcements for our lives together. Um, I think everybody here is connected, but if, you know, if you had an email change or whatever and you need to be reconnected again, there's connect cards on the back table. Um, there's a scripture study run by Adam, the first three Saturdays of every month. If you want more information about that, um, you can reach out to Adam, or um, you can look at the information that is in the newsletter or on social media. Um, Millennial Small Group will meet this Thursday at 6 p.m., and you can ask Beatrix or Adam um, for more information about where they'll be and what the focus will be. Um, please mark your calendar. Pride is less than a month away now. It's on Saturday, June 3rd. Um, so please keep an eye out um, for announcements about that. And 
during offering, there will be a sign-up sheet going around for you to volunteer for our Pride Squad. We need as many hands as we can get. Um, and we are excited to uh, announce again that we are raising funds for a new baby grand piano. Um, so if you'd like to contribute to this fund, you can do so online through Realm. You'll just uh, click choose piano from the drop-down option. Um, or if you wanted to uh, contribute a check written out to Evergreen, you can just put piano in the memo line. Now, um, I ask you to rise in body or spirit as we bring in the light. God who calls us beautiful and beloved. In this community and beyond. 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 May it be so. Our opening hymn is in your hymnal, 522, and the bread of life. I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger, and you believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father beckons, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And if you eat of this bread, you shall live forever. You shall live forever. And I will raise you up. And I will raise you up. And I will raise you up on the last Unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, and drink of his blood, you shall not have life within you, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. I am the resurrection, I am the life. If you believe in me, even though you die, you shall live forever. And I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. Has come into the world, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise them up on the last day. Uh, our Flourish language, printed in your bulletin, is the language we, of who we are as a community of faith. And uh, already risen, so stay risen. And um, 
And we can say this together. Ready? Flourish. Alone, alone together. together. We practice all our life alone and together. Evergreen is an open, affirming faith community rooted in the ways of Jesus. We grow through spiritual practices that nourish the individual and cultivate a more compassionate world. As we celebrate the gift of community, we share Christ's peace with one another. So just before we do that, just keep in mind what people are comfortable with. We're still in the age of COVID, right, Beverly? <laughs> but uh, the peace of Christ be with you. And also, also with you. Please pass the peace. I Peace, Keith. Hope your pride uh, uniform is ready, Keith. You're getting dressed up again for pride. I'm no, no. be in Seattle. But uh, we're going to Everybody that's out there, I want to see if y'all can do a little something, okay? Don't worry about it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Can y'all remember this rhythm? Can y'all clap this rhythm? All right. Let's clap it. Let's see if y'all clap it. Give y'all one more time. Did y'all drink your water today? 
Uh, you drink some orange juice. You drink water. Make sure you drink your water, okay? We might have to replace the juice with some, with some water. Because you didn't get your water, okay? Now, I think it is very cool that Jesus actually used everyday meals for us to remember you. So, like, every time you get to eat, guess what they mean? You get to remember Jesus. So, you can pray. Did you do lots of things. No. But can we pray right now? And then we should go back to the back and we can get some water. We're going to get some water, okay? Okay, that's perfect. Say attachment. <laughs> Listen, say dear God, dear God, thank you for this morning's scripture. Thank you for this morning's scripture of Jesus' words and his disciples. Thank you that he reminds us of God being with us throughout history. Amen. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> Let's get it. Can I show you how my hamster works? sitting while preaching is a stretch for me. <laughs> but I love y'all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it! <laughs> I hate it so much! It's a more comfortable chair. It's not about the... It's, it's the, it's the, yeah, it's the sitting. It's a sitting. But I mean, I mean, there are places in the Bible where Jesus sat to teach. Like that, you know, there's, there's tradition for it. You're looking um, just fine. Do I look like I am comfortable in a living room? <laughs> Good, I'm glad I look relaxed as if I'm in a living room. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of this mouth and the meditation of all these hearts be holy, pleasing, and acceptable in your sight. And I pray for illumination over our text that we would get to know you better today. Amen. Our text comes from 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 2 through 10. Hear now the word of God. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a, tr a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God, truly. To have Jesus as a cornerstone, where it looks a little bit different for every single one of us, and probably changes over time. And it's a little bit abstract, right, to have Jesus as the cornerstone of your life. But one way to have Jesus as the cornerstone of your life is to adopt a spirit of gratitude, to be grateful in all things, to make thanksgiving a cornerstone. This opens us up to seek out and find Christ in others, and therefore to build beloved community. Like living stones, may we let ourselves be built into a spiritual house, built into that beloved community, like our text says. Now this text is a communion text to me. As you may have heard in the past, but I'm telling you again, the word Eucharist means thanksgiving in Greek. And this text recalls the invitation we hear in the Lord's Supper, Taste and see that God is good. Taste and see. And in communion, we are made present to Jesus, and Jesus is made present to us, being filled with gratitude 
opens you to experience this communion. As has been shared, I visited Marty Becker on um, her last day on Earth. I sat with her and NJ and Patrick all day. And I only heard one, I only heard Marty say one thing that day. Um, the, the nurse um, made her more comfortable. And then she said quite distinctly, thank you. And I, I, I think that those were the, the, the last and only words that she spoke on her last day, were thank you. Forgive me, but I shared this story with Pastor Elizabeth Dick, and she said, oh, how very reformed of her, which I think does um, fit Marty. So in honor, to, in honor of Marty and for your spiritual formation um, on these reformed tenets, I thought that I would share a brief summary of what communion means in the reformed tradition, in our tradition. So I learned it in seminary using a mnemonic device. Thank you very much. The phrase is, Tom is a changed man, T-M-I-C-M, -M. and it's a, an acronym that helps you remember, like, what does communion really mean? Um, although, honestly, you could also just ask Sylvia, apparently, because she, <laughs> I have nothing else to teach Sylvia. Uh, Sylvia got it. So, Tom is a changed man. The T stands for Thanksgiving, that one I said. The Eucharist is the supreme expression of Christian Thanksgiving. The M of Tom, so it's not a great acronym. Uh, Tom Mulaney is a changed man there. The M in Tom Mulaney stands for memory of Christ. We remember. So the Lord's Supper reminds us of Christ's love, even unto death. The I stands for invocation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit joins us to Christ. That's the, uh, in this uh, mnemonic device for recalling what, the Lord's Supper means. The C in the acronym stands for communion of the faithful. This communion binds us together. So in communion, we are bound to one another. And then the second M in Tom Mulaney is a changed man stands for meal in the kingdom. Breaking bread feeds us. You know what Mr. Corey and Sylvia just said is true. Like this is a meal and it's, it is ordinary. I looked it up this morning. It's we're supposed to use the, the ordinary food of the people. And it is a meal we are fed. Breaking of the bread feeds us. At Rhodes, where I work, and by coincidence, where Marty was employed some years before me, I get to work with students of different faith traditions. And with Jesus as my cornerstone and gratitude as my cornerstone, I'm a Christian minister who does interfaith ministry. That's how I uh, make sense of it in my head. You actually never know what you're going to get, um, working with college students, but also in interfaith ministry. So one year, I, we held a vigil with our Jewish students. Um, they were in mourning, and they, it was a beautiful ceremony. They lit this giant candle, and then, you know, the service ended, all normal service ended, we cleaned up, and then my Hillel president, the Jewish Student Union president, she kind of hands me the candle and says, well, you're going to take care of this, right? Because we can't have candles in the dorm. And I say, yes, I am going to take care of this. What is important to you about this that I do? Because I have no idea what's going on, right? I, I did not get the, the cheat sheet for this. So she kindly explains, this candle is going to burn for seven days. And it's important to us that it burns for seven days. But we can't have candles in the dorm. So... Um, so I don't, I don't live far away, but my car does not have any functional cup holders. And this was like, it was a big candle, right? The big candle. And, um, but the student was in mourning, so, you know, I wasn't, I, could, I wasn't about to, to break her tradition. So I tried to approach with a posture of gratitude and that, that posture of communion. Thank you for inviting me into this strange and holy role. You have reminded me of the love that God has for us. Thank you for building with me. And so I said yes, and that's the story of how I drove home from work holding a lit candle, <laughs> which was one of the more stressful drives of my life, even though it was only a five-minute drive. 
and I drove holding this lit candle, and it was, um, and then I just let it burn on my patio undisturbed for the full seven days. And it's, it's not that that's a sacrament to me, um, but it is sacramental. It's, uh, it's not the Lord's Supper, but it was still a time when I felt bound together with my neighbor um, because I had performed this, this mercy for them so that they uh, did not have to get in trouble for having a candle in their dorm um, or that they didn't have to cut short their, their important morning tradition. I felt bound together with them and we built beloved community together and taste and see that God is good. Sometimes absurd, always holy. Another story of um, interfaith ministry that I think is worth me me mentioning is I had this back and forth with my Muslim Student Association president, and we're working on a shared Google Doc. We're looking at the budget, and she says, I'm, I'm funding four, um, four dinners, like one of every Monday during Ramadan, and I'm like, this is so expensive. <laughs> This is so expensive, why would I do this? And then she says, oh, by the way, I added some dates. <laughs> oh, what? I was like, more? I added more dates? And I'm like, oh my god. Like, I mean, I'm already funding for these. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do it with gratitude. Thank you for inviting me into building Rhodes College to feel like beloved community for all these students. Thank you for giving me a chance to be part of this community meal Right, not a, not a sacrament, but sacramental for being part of feeding these students. And I say, yes, that's fine. We can add the, you know, add the dates. But then I look at I don't see the dates. I'm like, where are these dates? She's like, no, I'm refreshing. Like, it's definitely refreshing. And I'm like, no, I'm refreshing. I don't see any more dates. And this is actually the story of how I learned that during Ramadan, Muslims break their fast by eating one or three dates, like the fruit. <laughs> so she added dates to the budget. <laughs> she added the line item dates. <laughs> and that just feels like a, like a rite of passage for being a chaplain, right? Um, you know, freaking out about all these added dates. I'm like, I'm like, okay, I guess I have another thousand dollars in the budget for one of these dinners. <laughs> no, it's twenty dollars for like like a barrel of dates, like a ton of dates. Uh, the dates are actually pretty expensive. And this, uh, you know, it, it was again not not a sacrament, but sacramental. To have this moment of, of we are we are going to be bound together, approaching with gratitude. Thank you for even giving me the chance to be your neighbor and to build this together. Feeding a meal, feeding these students. We built a beloved community together. Taste and see that God is good. Tastes like a date. <laughs> and one of uh, this first Peter text. I think we have to be careful with it, and even careful with the superficial understanding of what it means to have Jesus as the cornerstone of your life, right? Because that can mean that can mean that you think that people who do not believe what you believe or believe other than you, different than you, are lesser. Because in our text, it says they stumble, they are not chosen, they are in the dark. That's what it says. And it's easy for us to read this and think, oh, this means Christians are the best. But that... That's just not the attitude to have to build beloved community, right? Keep in mind, we are reading someone's personal letter to church leaders. We are snooping in the mail, snooping through the mail of a tiny offshoot that did not even see itself as a new thing. They just thought they had some new ideas within the religion that was already beaten down by the Romans in this time period. So, yes, the author does exhort the church to hold fast to believing in Christ, but they were a tiny sect. There was no, this was not punching down, because there was nowhere to punch down to. Like, they were already at the bottom. So we cannot read this letter today in our American context, in our Bible Belt context, and uh, see this as, okay, now we can have Christ as our cornerstone, and that means we can punch down. Um, that's just not what it means. But to have Christ as a cornerstone means that we have a strong foundation to build, to turn to our neighbor and build a beloved community together, to say, thank you for the privilege of being your neighbor, to have this posture of communion, of Eucharist, of gratitude. We might not share the same sacraments, but our relationship can be sacramental. Marty built community even in that hospital wing, and she built a beloved community here in our church family. 
we can build beloved community within this church and perhaps more importantly outside of the church, keeping that posture of gratitude and thanksgiving, the posture of the Eucharist, open to being made present to Jesus and having Jesus made present to us through everyone we meet, of being bound to one another and to Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. That openness to Eucharist, openness to thanksgiving, is how we build beloved community together. Taste and see that God is good, and may our lives also be a testimony to the phrase, thank you. Amen. Wish to be more grateful, have more gratitude, and more to be more present in the audio. And, um, and we're lucky here at Evergreen, we can take two minutes of silence to feel that gratitude, um, to, to enjoy the beautiful day, and think about our beloved community. And I'm wondering if most days have this moment of silence. Maybe that's how we can interconnect to many different things. So um, put your feet on the ground. Relax in your chair. Take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. I thought I would read our um, explanation of offering on page 14 to introduce the offering. This time is set aside for us to discern how we respond to God's love and goodness. We all have something to offer. Maybe it's time, maybe it's talent or passion, maybe it's money. No matter what it is, no matter how you go about discerning how you'll offer it, we want you to strike a balance of caring for your needs, your household's needs, and the community's needs. For what you offer God and the world, thank you. Amen. Would an usher come forward to collect the offering? And I think pass around the clipboard too. Okay. <coughs> I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. What do you think, prayer first or off, off doxology first? Prayer. Prayer? Oh, that's right. God, you are good and your 
mercy extends fresh every morning. Your love is steadfast. I pray a blessing upon our offering of the commitments and love in our heart that you would that you would draw us closer as a community through them. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit. So we sing our doxology. <laughs> to sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at the table with his disciples, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened. They recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all who trust in him to share the feast that has been prepared. I'm going to do um, what is the not the whole liturgy, we don't have to say this part, but it's called the Great Thanksgiving. Um, and so I am going to read and pray a version of it. Does anyone know this? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We grew up with it and the, the pastor actually sang it. And it was lovely. Let us pray. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, our creator. You have given us life and second birth in your spirit. Once we were no people, but now we are your people. You claimed Israel as your chosen nation and raised up the church as a witness to the resurrection, breathing into it your life and power. From worlds apart, you gathered us together. When we go astray, you welcome us home. Always, your love has been steadfast. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place who have forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In love with you and in compassion for all, Jesus healed and taught, challenged and comforted, welcomed and saved. He formed a community, promising to be with his disciples wherever two or three were gathered and sending them on his mission of hope and healing in the world. Jesus trusted his life to you and went freely to his death so the world may be set free from suffering and sin. You raised him from death and raise us also to live a new life with him in the power of the Holy Spirit. You send us out to make disciples as he commanded. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this cup from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour your Holy Spirit out upon these your gifts of bread and grape, that the bread we break and the grape we bless may be the communion of the body and the blood of Christ, 
by your spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. O oh God, today you have called us together to be the church. Unite us now at your table, and in one loaf and common cup, make us one in Christ Jesus. Let your spirit empower the life we share and ignite our witness in the world. With all who have gone before us, keep us faithful to the gospel teachings and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Give us strength to serve you until the promised day of the resurrection, when with the redeemed of all the ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread that was fresh and delicious <laughs> and gave thanks to God for it, broke it and gave to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks for it, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again in glory. Taste and see that God is good. When the ushers come forward, we have gluten-free, vegan, host, and grape as our cup today. This is the body of Christ and the cup of salvation. Taste and see that God is good. Let us pray. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, I invite us now to share and multiply our joy and divide our sorrow.
Spirit be with you now and always, and wherever you go, may peace find you there. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> 